last section of chapter four on triangles and coordinate proof. Okay, I know the word proof might freak you out a little bit, but it's a little different. It's not a two column proof. We're actually just gonna use some math and algebra um, to prove some of our geometric concepts. Uh, and we'll see that in the end. So coordinate proofs use figures in the coordinate plane and algebra to prove geometric concepts. Let's take a look at some base things to lead up to our coordinate proof. Uh, so for example, I'm given a coordinate plane and it says I have an isosceles right triangle. Isosceles right triangle. So let me just fill in a little bit here. So that means here's my right angle, which would have to mean that these two are congruent. That would be my isosceles, right? Two sides are congruent. Uh, and let's fill in the information that we don't know. Well, we should all know Q, okay? Because Q is the origin, right? It's at zero, zero. And okay, pretty straightforward. Looking at R. I think I can come up with R. R is saying that it is a distance of C in the X direction. So it's going C units in the X direction. Did it move up or down at all? No, it's right on the X axis. So that means it has a zero for its Y because it did not move up or down. Did not move up or down. The S we have to think about just a little bit. Yeah, well, I think I can come up with the X fairly easily. It's the exact same distance in the X direction as the R is, isn't it? It's that many units in the X direction, which we saw for R was C units. So I know it's C distance away, whatever that value is. I don't know. So we're just calling it the variable C. And they could have used any letter, but they decided to use C here. Well, and if I look closely, and that C units is this distance right here. And don't I know that distance is exactly the same as this distance because it's isosceles. So when it's vertical distance also be C because it's isosceles, so that X distance is the exact same as that Y distance. So there would be my missing coordinates. Q, right, it's on the origin. R, we noticed the Y didn't move up or down. And the S we had to think about just a little bit that it was an isosceles triangle and use the information that was given. Okay, so that's all we're doing. Let's try another one. Same thing, a missing coordinates, all right? Q, there we go again, it's on the origin, zero, zero. Let's look over at R, R just like the last time. It's 2A distance in the X direction. It did not move up or down, so I know it's zero again in the Y direction. Now how about S? I look at S up here. Let's look at my triangle. It's nice. Whoa, it's equilateral, isn't it now? Okay, so these are all the same distance. All the same distance. Uh, what else do I know about equilaterals? I got 60 degree angles. I don't know if that really helps me all that much. Well, can I figure out what that, that x, the distance in the x direction for the s is here? If I think about it, it's, isn't it basically halfway? It's like halfway at in the x direction as r is. So it's half of r, right? The r, x direction on r. So if I took half of that, it's a units. So I know that s is a in the x direction, a units away. What about the y distance? What's its vertical distance? How far did this go up? Could I find that? Does it have something to do with that a at all? Yeah, you know, I don't I don't know, that's kind of a tough one. We might be able to give it something kind of special down the road when we learn our special right triangles, but we haven't learned those yet. So the only thing I can do is, since I don't know its distance vertically, I just give it a new variable. So I don't, I don't really know, I can't use the information that's given, I can't use A at all, so I give it a new variable, in which case we usually just go with the next letter. So I say it's B units vertically, B in the Y direction. Okay, so that one I couldn't figure out, so I just give it a new variable. So just think about, see if you can use the information that's given. If not, just give it the next letter, the next variable. All right, here's an actual coordinate proof now. The segments joining the base vertices to the midpoints of the legs of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Oh boy. All right, I'm going to draw a little picture with that once. So if I have an isosceles, that means I got two sides that are congruent. It says, joining the base vertices 
Well, here are my base vertices, right? That's on the base. To the midpoints of the legs of the isosceles. Well, the legs would be right here. So midpoint, midpoint, somewhere about there. And I want to prove that their distances are congruent. So I want to prove that these two guys are congruent. Well, I don't think I want to draw my picture like that on my coordinate plane. Make it easy on yourself. If I look back to that first problem we did, there was an isosceles. It might be much easier to draw your triangle like that than the way I drew it over here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Over, up, about the same distance. Good, just like that. And give it some letters. So I'm just going to go A, B, C. Okay, and now before we do anything else, let's give it some values. So A, I know it's at 0, 0. Well, B, what could I do for B? I could do kind of like we did earlier. I could just say it's A units and it's 0 going up or down. But let's think about that. If I'm going to go from one of the base vertices, so here are the, the congruent legs. So that means the base vertices would be here and here. So from one of the base vertices to the midpoint of the leg, so that's coming like right here. So if that's the midpoint, I know that these two guys got to be congruent, right? So it's basically halfway from A to B. Well, if I call that A, if I would name this point something else, like if I would call this guy D, that means it would be A over 2. I don't really like fractions. I don't like fractions. So I'm going to switch this up a little bit. So instead of calling B A0, I'm going to go with B as 2A0. Because then I can make point D half of that x value, which is just a, so a is 0. That's a lot cleaner to work with. And then I'm going to do the same thing, draw my other leg here, my other uh, base vertice to the opposite midpoint of the leg. And I'm going to call that one e now. You can really call it whatever you want. Well, do I know how far up it is? Well, I better come up with c. What is c, first of all? Well, it's isosceles, isn't it? So that means this x direction here, this 2a, is the same distance as its y direction for c, right? Because these two guys are the same. So I know that it went 2a in the x direction because it's the same as b, and it's 2a in the vertical direction because it's isosceles. Yeah, so sometimes it's hard to vision, just like that first problem. So that means e is, well, the x direction is the same. It's still the same units over, so it's 2a in the x direction. But now it's halfway up, so just a half of the y direction. All right, that took a little bit of time there. Well, now what I got to do? I want to prove that they are congruent, which means they have the same distance. So what do you think you're going to apply? The distance formula. So which two am I trying to prove the same? I'm trying to prove that dc is the same as ae. Right, I'm trying to prove from base to opposite midpoint, from base to opposite midpoint, that those are the same distance. Well, I'm just going to have to come up with the distance for each one. So let's find the distance of, oops, find the distance of each one. So let's find the distance of BC first. Well, what do we have? Subtract your x's, so 2a minus a, and we square it. And then we add that on to subtract your y's and square it. So 2a minus 0 and square it, which gives me the square root of a squared plus 2a squared. And this is in parentheses still because that's going to become a squared plus 4a squared, applying my exponent property, which is finally the square root of 5a squared. And to be technically co correct, I could take the square root of a squared, remember simplified radical form, and it becomes a times the square root of 5. And to be exactly right. Well, let's find out for ae. So if I take ae, so the square root, I'm going to subtract my x's first. So where's ae? So x 2a minus 0. 
that 2a minus 0 squared plus, well, a minus 0, subtract my y's and square it. Oh, what do I notice? I should get the same thing, right? This is really a 2a squared, so that's 4a squared if I simplify it, and then a squared, which gives me a 5a squared, which simplifies to a times the radical of 5. So there we go, I just proved it. These guys have the exact same distance. So there's my proof. So you're using what we're doing with, with our coordinates, our coordinate planes like we did in the first couple problems, and we're going to prove something with it. Okay, so it takes a little bit of work, a little bit of thinking, um, but just apply what you've just learned to come up with those proofs. All right, not too many for you.